A sweep is a feature that adds or removes material from your model using a trajectory and a section. In this video, we're going to look at simple sweeps in which we use a single trajectory and they are usually going to have a constant cross section. For your trajectory, you could use a two-dimensional or a three-dimensional curve. In a previous video, I created some curves in three dimensions using an equation and I'm going to use that as my trajectory for the sweep. So to create a sweep, the command is located on the model tab in the ribbon. I'll click on it and in the message area I'm pr being prompted to select my trajectories. I'm going to open up the references tab to show you where your trajectories collector is and I'm going to select my three dimensional curve and it is selected as my origin curve. And again, with a simple sweep, you're just going to use one section in here. Excuse me, one trajectory. And taking a look at the dashboard, right now this is going to be generated as a solid feature. Later on, I will turn a sweep into a non-solid feature. If I had material in the model, this could remove material. And if you're generating it as a solid, you could create it as a thin feature. This button over here designates that we're going to have a constant section along the sweep. In a series of videos, I'll explain how to do a variable section sweep, which is incredibly powerful. But at this point, in order to define the section, we'll use this button on the dashboard and you're taken into sketch mode and you're going to get a couple of crosshairs located at the origin of your trajectory. You can use the icon in the in graphics toolbar to change to a sketch view where you are looking normal at your sketching plane. And for this one, I'm just going to create a circle located on here and let's use a diameter of about two. I'm happy with that. To get out of sketch mode, I can hold down the right mouse button to get to the check mark. And here you see a preview of the feature that is being created. And that's all that you need to do in order to define your simple sweep. At this point, I can hit the check mark. Middle mouse button will do the same thing as that. All right, so that's good for the first one. I'm going to show you some of the other different options by using a two-dimensional section. So let me show this parabola that I have in my feature. So again, it can be two-dimensional or three-dimensional curve, and the curve can be created in a variety of methods. It could be a curve through points, curve from equation, curve from a cross-section. It could be a sketch, or it could be a curve that's created from one of the editing commands, such as intersect or project or from the overflow menu, the wrap command. And it also could be created within the style feature. So let's start our sweep feature. And again, I will select my curve that I'm going to use. And here it's locating, it's chosen this side of my open trajectory to use as the start. If you click on the arrow, you're allowed to change the start to the other side. And right now it's generating as a solid. If I choose this button, it'll generate it as a non-solid feature. Let's define our section. And again, for simplicity, I'm just going to use a circle. And let's give it a diameter here. Let's use a value of 32. Hit the check mark to complete out of here. And now you can see that this is a non-solid feature. It's got open ends. If you're generating this as a non-solid feature, you could choose to cap the ends on here. One thing I want to point out about this one as I'm creating it, in the references tab, it's creating my section normal to the trajectory at every point along here. In a moment, I'll show you how to change that. I'm gonna go into that in more detail when I go into the variable section sweep, but the default is that your feature is going to be created so that your section is normal or at a 90 degree angle to your trajectory at every point along the trajectory. And just to show you some of the other different options, if I generate this as a solid, I can use this button to give it a 
thin wall. And for the thickness of that wall, let's use that a value of 5. And right now it looks like the material is going to the inside. You can use the flip button to toggle whether the material is going to go to the inside, the outside, or if it's going to be symmetric about your sketch. That's good. Let's hit the check mark. Now I want to show you how to generate this as a feature that removes material. In other words, what people commonly refer to as a cut. So I have a part open on my screen. I have a sketch that just consists of a spline. And so we will create a sweep. I'm going to select my sketch as my trajectory. Let's go into the sketcher and just going to throw a circle in here. Let's use a diameter of one. Hold down the right mouse button and use the check mark to get out of sketch mode. And right now it's adding material. I could use the button on the dashboard to remove material. Oops, I thought it was available from right mouse button functionality in uh, the sweep feature. It's not. Let's go and use this button to remove material. And right now you'll notice that because it's normal to the trajectory, I end up with a little sliver of material over here. Same thing over on the other side. When you're creating a sweep that intersects with a solid, from the Options tab, you can choose to Merge Ends, and it'll get rid of that little extra material as it intersects the solid. Another option that I could use in this case is if I go to the References tab, instead of being normal to the trajectory, I could choose to make a constant normal direction. In other words, have my section and here's the weird part. It's called constant normal direction. You can choose some reference that your section is going to be parallel to along the length of the feature. So for example, I could pick this surface here. And if I go to, let me try my top view. What it's doing at this point is my section at every point along here is being parallel to that reference that I selected. You'll notice in here it gets very narrow and necked inside of there. So again, that's the effect of the constant normal direction. And again, I've generated this to remove material. Now we will take a look at creating a uh, sweep with the section inside of the feature. Let me hop back over to the other part over here and turn on my datum plane visibility. Uh, just be aware that if you are creating the feature, normally you create the trajectory in advance, but you could actually create it inside of the feature. So if I go to the sweep command, right now it's prompting me to select a trajectory. Well, I don't have a trajectory. You have the datum icons over on the right hand side so for example you could create a uh, create points inside of here you could create the curve through uh, points in here or as I'm going to do I'm just going to again just create a sketch on the datum plane called front and let's use an ellipse And I'm not going to, oops, let's hit the check mark to get out of sketch mode and turn off my plane visibility. Now that I've created a curve to use as my trajectory, I can hit the play button on the dashboard to resume it. And it's automatically using that curve that I created as the trajectory. And I've got my start point over here. Let's create our section in here. And... This time I'm going to use an ellipse as well as my section just to show something that to some people who might have used uh, Pro Engineer or Creo Parametric in older versions. Let me change this to a value of 100 and I'm going to make this a value of 150. Let's get out of sketch mode. There you see the feature being created. Be aware in earlier versions of Pro Engineer, there was a rule that sections could not intersect itself 
along the length of the trajectory. That rule has been removed in Creole Parametric, uh, later versions of Pro Engineer as well, if I remember correctly. So you are allowed to have your feature intersect itself. As a matter of fact, I could go and change this to a much higher value. And you'll see that as I do that, I end up getting a weird looking feature inside of here. So your feature is actually allowed to intersect itself. All right, that's good. Let me hit the check mark. And again, if I even hover over the feature, you can see the weird geometry that's created on the inside of there. All right, a couple other things that I want to show you. I showed merged ends before, but I just want to show it again in a another different model. I'm going to turn on my plane display. So here I have a part that is a blend with two sections and I shelled it out. And I'm going to create my trajectory just as a sketch on the datum plane called right. And I'm using uh, the sketch feature just because it's a very quick way of creating a trajectory. And let's go to our sketch view. And I want to lock into the side of this part over here. And so when I go to my sketch references, I can use the use cross section command and pick this surface in order to get the intersection of my curved surface with my sketch plane. And that's something I might need to do if I'm using an, a weird kind of shape in here. So I'll hit the solve button and close. Just go to a non-shaded mode. Let me go to wireframe. Just to show you that you have a dash line being used over here uh, for your sketch reference. Let me turn off my datum plane visibility. And I'm just going to sketch some straight lines in here. And I'll show you why in a minute why I am doing that. All right, let's create some... Let's modify some of these dimensions here. And let's create a dimension from here to here using left mouse clicks, middle mouse button to locate, and change the value. So that is good for my trajectory. And again, it's locking into the sides of my part. Let me hit the check mark. And let's go back to a shaded mode. And I will create my sweep. Since my sketch was still selected, it's automatically using that as the sweep. And I'm going to add material. And for what I want to show you, I'm going to create my sketch. Let's go to the palette and polygons. I'm going to drop an octagon. Let me go to my sketch view. Let's just drop it in over here. And I don't need the scale of the octagon to be so big. So let's change that yeah, a little bigger. And hit the check mark to complete the, oops. Let's complete importing the section. Now complete the sketch. And again, this is a situation where I would want to merge the ends. I'm generating this as a solid. It intersects with the existing solid. So I could merge the ends to get rid of those little gaps that I get in the model if I'm just using the normal tra to trajectory option. So that's good for that. And the other thing that I want to show, let me use my pick icon to go and view normal to this surface. I had straight line sections and you'll notice when I have a straight line trajectory and I have these sharp edges, Creo Parametric will miter about the corners and create the feature. So here on the corners of my straight line sections, it ends up looking a lot like the corner of a picture frame. So with that, that's how you create a simple sweep using a trajectory and a section. In later videos, we'll go into variable section sweeps, which is one of my favorite features in Creo Parametric because of all the power you have with it.
I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creolewindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.